Episode 156 of the Corey Shepherd Podcast. Congratulations to the Guyana Amazon Warriors. It's about time. It's about time. Only take care of people are too wicked. It's the wickedest people in support. I keep taking care of support. It's the wickedest people that have. <laughs> Welcome back to everybody who's been listening. Thank you for tuning in to all the new listeners. I'm glad all you're back. Listen, I was back in the Guyana Amazon Warriors and they come true in fine style. In fine style. A blowout. Obliterate. What was the other words you could use for that? They destroy them completely. Salute the guy in Amazon Warriors. Special salute to Imran Tahir, the captain of. For those who don't know, it's CPL, right? Well, you have to stay inside the Caribbean, mix up and culture. You know? If you're a little brother, you have to make sure they know what's going on here. You know? But CPL, Guyana, finally, I think this is the sixth final or the fifth or sixth final. And they finally get one. They went so much final and lost. They play a tournament where they're undefeated in every game except the final. Why TKR fans like that? We can't get with so, so one, we can't lose. As soon as we lost, everybody started to say, No, they sell out. Watch out. Although, I, although I see text message, screenshot a text message and thing going wrong. Saying, Sulana Ryan say you take 300,000. Bravo and Paula take 500,000 apiece. And while I don't believe that, me and get them wrong. <laughs> so let's see the price of gas. Or let's see the price of grocery. Thing going up, me and get them wrong at all. But what I mean, come on. The thing is a better thing if other people win in the thing. The thing could never stay the same. It can't be that true. That I don't find TKR side was fair in the first place. You cannot pick a side in the region here where it's Pollard, Bravo, Sulina Ryan, Andre Ross. Or you kill somebody or you kill somebody. That's not right. The, the, long, the longevity of the tournament and the vibes and the action that we like every year for CPL is going to die if the thing look one-sided. If it look like only one team could win, the league will die. You need, you need to have a, a, a healthy level of competition, right? So salute to the guy and Amazon Warriors. As we say, healthy level of competition. Right? I, want, I want the guy and guy and <laughs> Chicken curry. Only keep calm. It's one only win. It's one. <laughs> only record is still very much a losing record. What is happening? Why are they so why it had to get so out of timing and disrespectful? Why do they have to remind me that we rich now and only poor? <laughs> why, why? Is that necessary? <laughs> is that necessary, Guyanese Babu? The very best of the Guyanese Babu telling they have oil now and we are no oil. So why, 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 why are we doing this? Why are they have to talk to me like this? Why are they being mean? Why are they being rude? TKR is still the winningest franchise in the history of the CPL. Still the winningest. <laughs> we win all about, you know what I mean? Salute to Guyana again, because Guyana, every time stumps put down in that stadium, just like in Border, that game is sellout, you know, Guyana, I think is the biggest supporter of CPL. Uh, in terms of the crowd on the ground, had to be Guyana. Win, lose, or draw the back in the team. You know what's true, too? If TKR was losing, the way Guyana been losing over the years, and our losing finals and not showing up and saying, 
I don't know that Brian Lara Stadium and the Oval would be that full. You know, I see it with Jamaica. Salute Andre Fletcher and them. The first in Jamaica do good. I have, a, I, have a, I have a healthy dose of Jamaica to play in this episode for no good reason, really. You know, but a healthy dose of Jamaica. Uh, just like the Guyanese Babu, and we have a few. Uh, 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 have some more songs to salute to, to Guyana. But I find we in Trinidad must always remember that we're part of our region, and if if we dominate the region. In a way that seem advantageous, it seem underneath or whatsoever. In whether it's sports, culture, finance, people are start to feel a way about it. They're watching me a certain way. Music, it don't matter what it is. <laughs> so you must always remember that the whole region had to do better together. I was talking to Guyana side I here too, but we must remember the whole region had to do better for we to remain as one. I see over the course of this week, right? Outside of the CPL, and again, salute to everybody who participates in the CPL. I think they had a great tournament. It always provides a level of entertainment and camaraderie and rivalry among the, the, the region that we really, really need. And I'm promising myself now to start traveling to see some CPL games eventually. Guyana might be hard, right? I went one CPL game in Guyana, and it was difficult. I mean, just getting into that stadium is hard. As a matter of fact, I think I went two games. I went and see Guyana play Jamaica, and then I went and see Guyana play Trinidad. And that traffic to get into that stadium and get tickets. But salute my boy Robbie Rambran. Robbie goes out So maybe I'll go a game in Guyana or two and try to go some of the other games up there. And I think CPL is definitely something we have to support. I see detractors saying that it's not doing anything for the regional game and all that. That's something else we have to address. But in terms of entertainment, rivalry, camaraderie among nations, I think CPL doing a lot to bring us together as a region. But... As much as we come in together as a region, I think this be pulling me apart too. All you remember the comedian Major Hype. So it's a Major Hype, right? Ma- Major Hype is a comedian who seemed to be based in Atlanta or New York. And we are not sure what Caribbean island he's from. He, he had to be from some one of the islands. But his comedy and his sketches is really based on... Like he would create a scenario and do a Guyanese version, a Bajan version, a Trini version, a, a Jamaican. And it's very, very funny. Not just the fact that he had the accents done cool, but in a lot of ways he had the mannerisms and the way we behave and the, the little microaggression he's finding every, or macroaggression in so many territories. He have all them things done cool, the way he's cussing thing. And he was on a panel over the last week. And in the panel, we had a, remember this man is a, a comedian, right? But in the panel, they asked him about Chicken curry versus curry chicken. I think it's an apt question, especially because it was a chicken curry versus curry chicken CPL final. So he answered like any other Caribbean person who not from Guyana would answer. He say, I never hear nothing about chicken curry nowhere else in the world but in Guyana, which is true. The first time I went, what they call a seven curry, right? It was a wedding and they said they having a seven curry. It's seven curry. That, the, the tradition is that you curry seven different things and everybody eat, right? So it's had um. What I would have called dal, it had um, like baji. I saw the different um, non meat things, right? I think it was a Hindu wedding, so I saw the things that's non meat. But when they go on by the outside, they come out of the house now and they go on in the car, man, pop the trunk, man, a curry chicken, curry, all kind of thing, curry inside the thing. But again, they will say, I have a chicken curry here, I have a this curry, I have a that is just the way it's talk. I, 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 uh, you know me. I don't, I don't know why this debate is rage on about right and wrong. It's not right and wrong. If you say chicken curry, they're right. It does not matter what it is. It's just tradition and culture and so on. You understand? So if 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 you're on a panel and they ask you a question like that, to me, is a question to open the door for a little peacock and a little old talk between Trini and Guyanese particularly. But major hype, and I didn't think I, I didn't think of that before. He say. When you go to Jamaica, it's curry goat. It's no goat curry, right? It's, 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 it's everywhere else is say curry. So he make the joke about it and he say, Guyana is different anyway. Guyana is not part of the Caribbean. Guyana is in South America, but we love them. We accept them, right? I, to be honest with you, I find it's funny. Oh, but Dave Chappelle is always say, everything funny till it's about you. Because I can tell you, Guyanese people didn't find it was funny and they went up on major hype. You know, people storm your comments when he went live on Instagram uh, Saturday night. Everybody on him, they, 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 they find he disrespectful and this and that and the lame dog and stop using and appropriating Guyanese culture. And it's like, no, 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 they're going real far. Guyana is, in fact, in South America. To the point where I remember going to Guyana to lecture for the first time. Salute the Nations University, Dr. O'Toole and the team there. But when I started lecturing there, 
I had to break out of the habit of calling Guyana an island. And the students would correct me all the time, right? They say, yeah, but we're we not an island. We, we're not a Caribbean island. And it, 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 it's true. It's a fact, right? It is, they, they're not an island. They're part of our continent and so on. And um, while that might be true, they are one of the founding members of CARICOM. I think is, is, the, is the headquarters of CARICOM still in Guyana? Or did it start off there? But the, I mean, Guyana is one of, is, is critical to the success of the region, even more so now. We go, I mean, if the, now is not the time to bad talk Guyana and play with them. No, no, Guyana owns the energy sector of the region, so you might want to be a little more respectful of Guyana these days. But our Guyanese people need to calm down to it was a joke. The man is a comedian. How 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 major hype could? Say or not say who is to be accepted in this region. <laughs> he say, well, he's not one of the Caribbean, well, he's no Caribbean island. You know, you're not a Caribbean person. And I think that's an American thing too, where they say, we are, you know, they say the Caribbeans, the Caribbeans, you know. But I just find it was overdone. The reaction was too big. But Guyanese people are a little defensive. They're on edge. So I'm glad they're winning with the oil. I'm glad they're winning the CPL. I hope they calm down. I hope Major Hype don't stop doing Guyanese accents and thing because when he do Guyana, Guyana is one of the funnier ones that he's do. He have all of them done good. Eh? And I mean, elephants in the room, right? Major Hype had an issue back in the day with domestic violence that caused a lot of Caribbean people to turn their back on him. I too, I was a little turned off. Not so much by the um, the domestic violence charges. Um, maybe I shouldn't say that. But I mean, not to say that if you get caught up, if you beat your wife, right? If you beat your wife, I don't know how to play it better. And you do, those things are not necessarily as unforgivable and beyond a comeback as some people in this era would make it seem now if you son wife beat on you 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 you're not finding your way back to the to the to the part of living in peace and and, and treating everybody with respect then you go at a distance yourself from you but we can't pretend that these things never happened before and people who have done egregious things very people 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 rec- uh not reconcile or rectify. What's the word I'm looking for? People turn their lives around. People live better and learn from their mistakes and evolve and all those types of things. So uh, I'm not one where you hear that accusation or you see something like that come out and then immediately I no longer like you or not a fan of you. What I didn't like was the response. I find that his response was very much um, not taking ownership of what he did and looking to find reform or or. or, or, or better himself and change his ways it seemed as though it was like i's a victim too she had man and all them guys and i was getting a little overbearing so i couldn't watch too much of that but since he's been back to the skits and, and doing that i back to him now nah, sorry <laughs> because that dude is very very funny so i hope he continue i hope he continue to do better and get stronger and stronger and fix the things that need to fix just like all of us all of we have things to fix and all of we who's be canceling people and stop follow them and you don't want to hear nothing more them again I, I, I like it you know because we act like if we don't have a little thing we act like we don't beat women too you know wherever is your version of beating women right but salute to them. That was just a thing over the weekend. And uh, uh, before I get into our local thing here, again, sticking to the region, because clearly the region is winning <laughs> and Trinidad is not. <laughs> because that piece of batting I see from Puran, from Andre Russell, from Pollard, that, that, that display I see of batting in the, in, 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 in the stadium down in Guyana, this episode couldn't possibly have nothing to do with Trinidad. This had to be a regional episode. We can't. <laughs> That was embarrassing. We should have well let somebody else go to that final. We should have let Guyana win that game, go straight to the final, and let we go and play Jamaica and lose and let Guyana play Jamaica because we had no right in that final. We, as a team with so much big names, and big, we just never show up for the game. We, we look like... And sorry, yes, sports people who don't like me to talk about sports, but I think Pollard make a fatal mistake. You have a game... On the grounds where you had to play your finals, right? And you went and started a B team. You went and started a whole set of men who ain't played for the whole season and who you're not playing in the final. The hardest pitch to play on in the region. Why wouldn't you select your finals team there and let them express themselves and see what the pitch offers? But then again, what the hell I know about cricket? Paul had a championship all over the place. Anyway, last thing I want to talk about in the region here is something that I've seen following Buju Banton's new album release. Salute to Buju. <laughs> Buju have a new album. Every Everybody, I think Buju is a Trinidadian favorite, right? Everybody in Trinidad love Buju. And uh, typically when he come here, 
everything selling out. The stadium selling out. His his, his, his album sell. His music plays on the radio in heavy rotation. Here is from his earliest music, like Mister mentioned, and then all the way up to the, today. His music still plays all the time, and we love Buju, right? Buju's Buju's a trini too, but um, in on his press store for this Born for Greatness album, th- there are some things there that's the, so, so uncomfortable to watch, right? Now, Buju, if you know him, is a very militant type of person. When you see him in interviews, he seems to be a difficult person to interview. In that there are certain questions he don't answer at all. Like, if you ask, ask him about his inspiration for songs, he shuts down those things. And um, he's very philosophical in his approach to answering questions. So it's hard to get a direct or a straight answer from him. And um, sometimes almost as if he thinks the interviewer out for him. I've seen it many, many times in interviews. You know when I see him most comfortable talking to interviewees, interviewers? When he on Ebro or Hot 97, when they call him and interview him, or when he on Fat Joe's show and they're talking about it, he seems more calm and more receptive to questions and, you know, less defensive. Which is odd to me, you know what I mean? Like, for your own people in the region, whether it's interviews in Jamaica or throughout the, the, the region, or I've seen him in interviews with people from Africa, uh, and he's, he seemed a little bit closed off, you know what I mean? A little bit defensive. But with these Yankees and them, he's, he seemed very, very comfortable. But one interview in particular struck me. I mean, I, listening to the music and stuff, Buju is who he is, you know what I mean? The, the, the music have enough vibes in it and have enough protests in it and enough real life in it to be considered a Buju album post Till Shiloh. If you listen to Till Shiloh, those that's favorites in our, um, in our musical history in the, in the region. But one thing that I found strange was he showed up on a political platform, having come back from the States and been so vocal about COVID and all the different things that the government was doing and so on. He showed up on an opposition platform. I found that to be odd. It's not the type of person you'd expect to show up. And I'm not talking about the Bob Marley type show up on a, in a political rally and perform on stage. Well, I guess that's what it was. He showed up in a, a political meeting or the, or the opposition party. And I, I found it was odd. But even beyond that, in the quickness to condemn things, you know what I mean? This going wrong, the government doing this, other artists not doing this, young artists not doing that. Uh, interviewer asked him a question and I think innocently compared him to Sizzler and Capleton, which you had to understand it from a foreigner perspective, right? As a trini, the comparison to Buju, the comparison of Buju to Capleton and Sizzler would song, it's song normal. It's like, that's where it is first because that wave of conscious music and when the, when dance was taking over its slackness in the in the mid nineties, that wave of conscious music or, or, or coming down to two thousand when Buju and the Bodia, we would lump all of them together as the people who were behind that move. When 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 Buju started to grow dread, and do tell Shiloh and um, I can't remember the name of the album that came right after that. But those those things change the way we as youths grow up. You know what I mean? So and Sizzler and Capleton was right there with it. So the the interviewer who was not from Jamaica asked him about that. And he kind of said, Well, you clack, you can't class me with Sizzler and Capleton. Basically saying that when, no matter what, I stick to Rasta music and I didn't stray from it and this and that. I just, just find it's like, that one's always going on with Buju and that. I just saying that against the backdrop of the fact that Buju, I, I saw a dude from Twins or Twins talking about Buju and his uh, refusal to admit any wrong or to publicly say, well, listen, and the cocaine thing, it was bad, you know what I mean? I take a chance and I get catch and I repent. Well, not repent, but I, I, I'm struggling to find that word I'm looking for. But I change my ways. I reform. I see differently now, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm human. So it's human, right? But Buju just don't seem to take that hard stance with himself, you know what I mean? He's still, you see the video with him with the, with the, with the coke thing, he was clearly trying to set up a coke deal. But he's just stand up on this platform that Babylon set him up. It could be hard for Babylon to set me up to get a, a, a thing of coke for me to think and taste and say, yeah, I like that. Let me roll with that. Let me make the deal. It could be hard to set me up. There. Babylon could set me up in a lot of ways, but that wouldn't be one of the ways, right? It means that you like that and you do that. Something. I just found that to be strange. And uh, I, 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 Salute. Again, the album is great, but I, I, don't like I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like the way it is received. I don't like what it does to his, to, to my view of Buju, is one of the greatest dancehall artists of all time. It, it's quite discomforting to see. I just want to put that up front, right? Yeah, I come here to celebrate the region and I come to celebrate Guyana because clearly we are serious about 
after where I see the <laughs> so let me get on to celebrating the region and we had a, we had a, we had to play a little song for Guyana again before we move on from this. I'm sorry for all the people who don't like the cricket and don't like the CPL. Only know when CPL come here, we just get a little warm and excited. But I want to play for you. I want about Guyana from the mighty Sparrow. <laughs> Drop a hydrogen bomb in PG. Lord of mercy, they drop a hydrogen bomb in PG. Lord of mercy, riot in tongue, mama. I hear the whole place on fire, from kitty to the waterfront. All that, bun down flat, flat, flat. I ain't care if all a BG bun down. I ain't care if the whole of Booker's bun down. But they'll be putting me out my way If they tackle Tiger Bay And Bandung me hotel where all them wabin does stay Wait, where's that wabin, boy? Lock up over a thousand people Well, that was trouble They sent for policemen in the country To bring unity But police are not afraid Stand up and they watch in stores get raid Walk in the store, take everything And when you're done, set fire to the building But I ain't care if the whole of BG burn down I ain't care if all of Booker's burn down but they'll be putting me out my way if they tackle Tiger Bay and Bandung me hotel where all me wabi in the stay. A woman walk in a store on Main Street Slippers on she feet, dirty petticoat, long time straw hat And she smelling worse than that But she walk out like a lady High heels, glasses, jewelry The straw hat she had on wearing before She take much and she bun it inside the store I don't care if the whole of BG bun down I don't care if all of Booker's bun down but they'll be putting me out my way if they tackle Tiger Bay and Bandung me hotel me all me wabi in the stay. And Bandung me hotel me all me wabi in the stay. Salute again and congratulations. So listen. What you do over the long weekend, boy? It was a long weekend. I think this, for some reason, was the longest long weekend of all time. I don't know. I don't know what it was about this particular long weekend. Trinidad really had too much a holiday, you know. But happy Republic Day to everybody. Salute to Trinidad and Tobago. We didn't get a Republic Day gift that we were looking for, but it's good to be given. You know what I mean? It's a good. It's a good practice. I know a girl who is give people gift when her birthday comes. So that's clearly what's um. What the TKR did. Uh, some housekeeping matters, right? I just want to let you know that uh, everybody should get an email who's listening on Google Podcasts, right? 
So if you listen, if you've been listening on Google Podcasts and that's your preferred place to listen, you gotta find somewhere else to listen, right? <laughs> I personally find of late there was a just um I don't, you know you don't like to podcast about podcasting, but when I watch any numbers for the podcast all the time, I only find the numbers low. This is for the last couple months, right? I say, but what is going on? I see in the YouTube numbers and things looking normal, but the numbers of listeners looking low. And one of the things I had noticed was that Apple Podcast listeners was taken over the Google podcasting by far. But it wasn't like more Apple podcast people are trying to figure out what is going on. Like people just lock more off on Google or it's just so rough. Not realizing that when I published the episode, it wasn't coming up on Google podcast at all. I had to email Google podcast last week. Uh, because the, the Denise Plummer episode again, which was important to me. And thank you very much. Thank you all for all the feedback and all the good words about the Denise Plummer episode. I maintain that Denise Plummer is underrated. And continue to take in that and share that with friends and family. I appreciate everybody who spread the word on that. Important episode to me, right? But when I see I do that episode and late in the week, nothing from Google Podcasts. When I check my Google Podcast, it wasn't up at all. So I suspect that it might be delayed and the, the, it wouldn't be getting pulled. Uh, so if it's not, switch over to Spotify. You could find it there. Buy an iPhone. That would always be good advice. iPhone 15, come out. Check that out. You know what I mean? Up your game. Or... YouTube music supposed to be where Google Podcast is going to, right? I mean, Google on YouTube, right? And I know people saying the YouTube experience is not the greatest. I don't, I don't listen to much podcasts on YouTube because you can switch. You know, you can't do other things on your phone while you're listening. You do save the spot you're on sometimes. I, I much prefer the podcast. As a listening kind of man, I like talk radio. So um, for those who don't want to listen on YouTube... Just give it time because they're supposed to make YouTube music available in Trinidad. And if YouTube music is available here for free, I hope, uh, it means that uh, I will make sure that it's on YouTube music. And all you have to do is pull it up on YouTube music. You'll be able to close it off and listen in the background, everything that you used to do the last time. You'll be able to download the episode and full listen when you're ready and all those things, right? And it will push the download onto you once you subscribe and things. So share and like and subscribe and do all the things you used to say, right? But let me just get us out of the way. Hard news in Trinidad. Hard news. Long time we didn't talk about some hard news. Uh, as crime continues to be the major issue in the country, and the greatest prime minute, uh, president of all time, Christine Kangaloo, came out the other day and called for the opposition and them to get their act together, you know what I mean? Sit down and talk to one another and work out all these situations where crime is concerned. I uh, see that the opposition leader and the prime minister are heading into crime talks. I like it. So, Prime Minister Dr. Rowley opens crime talks with Kamala. This is from K. Marie Fletcher, right? Is she say Kamala? It's not me. Uh, three, days, three days after Christine Kangaloo called for unity amongst parliamentarians to deal with crime, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley has signaled that he will make the first move to initiate such discussions with the opposition during a post-cabinet media briefing at the Diplomatic Center. Rowley said he plans to write opposition leader Kamala Fassad Bissessa to invite her to sessions to present her plans to tackle the country's high crime rate. In her maiden speech, well, you, you know the speech, right? You spoke about that before. I just want to take a minute to salute this, right? Now, sometimes the things that politicians are doing is be mainly window dressing and doing it for, you know, doing it for the sake of the look and the optics and those types of things, right? As I, as I always say about, about politics, all we're watching is wrestling. And wrestling, while it might have people who's mortal enemies and uh, the, the script is be written, so every now and again, they go do a tag team, right? They go work together. Oh, but a better reference or more up-to-date reference might be reality TV. Sometimes when you're watching reality TV, you realize it ain't so much reality, no? Them things well scripted and well put together so, so that they they have storylines that run through them that would be interesting and that, that people will follow, right? And reality TV is a new soap opera these days. So politics is a lot like that. But I do feel as if... We have to continue to treat or start to treat the situation where crime is concerned in this country as a crisis. I do. I, I think we. You ever hear the story about the, the the frog you put in the water and then you put it in cool water, but you take the cool water and you put it on the pot to boil, and when you put it to boil, the frog is dying slowly. But if you if you if you throw the frog in boiling water, you jump out one time. <laughs> They say that's not true, right? If you check Snopes and things, they say that is not true. The frog will jump out if the water gets hot, right? But the moral of the story is that when you're slowly going through temperature increases, it could be more difficult for you to detect that things have changed. And what you're doing is adjust slowly and gradually adjusting to a new normal all the time until it kills you, right? 
I feel like that is where we are collectively in Trinidad because we're still in a position where crime is rampant. I don't know what a way to put it at this point in time. It's rampant, it's random, it's uncontrollable. Yes, we might still take comfort or a false sense of comfort in the fact that crime might be limited to gang-related activity and those types of things. But I remember the days when they used to say, Buju and themselves, they say when Buju and them are show, they just sneakers getting teeth and click store getting broken into in song. There's no clear pattern as to what's happening with crime these days. People just getting gunned down, police making statements. Uh, 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 last week, a man spray up a house and shoot up a whole bunch of people. I, mean, I don't know if they're sending a message. Alexander talking about it on, on um, what, what, what they call his show, Beyond the Tape. And Ian Allen talking about He still have a show. Ian Allen talking about it on Crime Watch. And everybody just in this pot that boiling slowly. And we, 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 we are just into the new temperature all the time. Because I don't know about you, but the, the, the headlines don't affect me very much anymore. I've been, I've been open, right? When I see, uh, it's, it's almost, I, I just use myself as an example, right? But when I see four people get shot up and seven people, four people get killed and seven people, sh- or three other additional people shot and a gunman just shoot up the place and run off in the bush and thing. I start to not interpret that as real people. That's ju- uh, Sorry to be crude, right? And uh, of course, with all due respect to the families of people who are affected by crime, it do feel like it's real people. It do feel like it's a real situation or a real community. It look like the news. Remember when you were small and you used to watch CNN and just have Beirut and people killing. I don't know what Beirut is. Beirut and song like thing to drink for me is Beirut song like thing for the boy. So I not paying attention to it at all. Like it, it does not, it does not resonate the same way as it would have 10, 15, 20 years ago when you see a crime like this. The whole nation would have been in uproar. Now, granted, I deliberately stay away from crime as a topic because. I, if I was talking about crime ever, if I had just stuck, when I had first started this podcast, right, for those of y'all who knew, I used to take whatever is the biggest stories in the week and talk about those. Until I realized it's about three, four months all I talk about is crime. <laughs> and then I realized, but wait, I could get the press trying to do this because I started to now not want to talk about episode. Because now for me to talk about it, I had to read up on it, find out what is the situation, find out all the names of the people. I not put myself through that again. But we're certainly in a situation locally here where the water boiling. And we stay in calm. Because if you're anything like me and that shoots up happen, it's not that I don't feel sorry for the people, but it, it don't seem like it could happen to you. And I don't feel nobody will come and shoot up my house and them kind of thing. I saw, salute my boy Jada. I saw he said my thing last week with um, a man named Dust Boss, right? But Dust Boss. You go on TikTok, you'll find Dust Boss. Dust Boss is very funny. <laughs> on TikTok and them thing because... Every Friday that God sent, he go pop something saying, Ah, boy, Friday morning, all who have my little dust from all you, come in. Come in and bring in my little dust now. Don't let me come and look for you. Now, I, in my naive self, I feel that's a joke because I think everybody who in front of the camera is like me and come to make joke. I see a live Jade sent me with them, that's boss talking to two other men, openly about and I know all you're killing coconut vendor, all your thing. And the man saying, but how you mean? And he was in his life. He looked for that. And I think, what is happening here? What is going on? I see in the States as a parallel where rappers in Atlanta in particular being taken to court and had to face the courts for lyrics in their songs that related to crimes that they go. Go and look for Young Thug and Gunner and look for these fellas and see what it is they're going through. Lyrics in their music being used against them in court for crimes that exist out there. Anything they do on social media is monitored. You get me? But we have men who could come here and say openly, yeah, the coconut man wasn't bothered. And, and, and they, 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 they free. And I mean, <laughs> nothing being done about them things. And at least there's no outcome. Me and what being done if it's being investigated, but we've not seen any outcome. We've not seen any change. We've seen a, a trend that where the criminal free to go and talk about that on an open forum because they know nothing will happen to them. And we reach a point now where it, we, we hear stories. I didn't know him, but I hear stories about Burroughs and Flying Squad and them kind of thing. We see stories of bad policemen all three years up to the way Johnny Abraham and them. Alexander is one of them bad police who everybody knows. No, no, no nonsense. Let me, let, me, let me take out of the equation that Alexander could be corrupt or bought in any way, right? Let me say he's the baddest police to have because... He all day, he visible, he big and strong, he respected among lawmakers, politicians, and the people who just watching TV, entertainers, 
criminals, everybody respect and know the name Alexander, know the face. That is a big boy in the police. When Alexander show up in the police sports day in the match pass, he's a superstar. He on TV complaining about crime just like me on the podcast. This is the baddest police we have. And he watching them situations and saying, hmm, look at this, look at, look at. So you, you, you the police who we, we, who we charging with the responsibility and expecting to not just, what is do, protect and serve? Not just do that, but also to, we, we, we're looking at you to make not just preventative measures to avoid crimes like these, but to respond to these things with force. We, we, we need you when force is needed. You complaining on TV just like we too. <laughs> the water boiling, huh? the water is boiling and we not jumping out. And the jump out had to come in a few ways. It's either we jump out for me. <laughs> my jump out could come from jumping out. I feel like I feel like a like, like, like visa. I feel Stacy could teach them. It's not SCA anywhere else. We could go and teach SCA somewhere else, and I could do this. I go still record and thinking. You know, I go watch the news and I go record and think. But I not going through this. You see this here? This is not it. This can't be what a society is and what it come to. Well, criminals in charge and we not in charge. The jump out could also come in the form of a serious response to this thing. Because we still in a, st- in a state where we comfortable with a police arrest that keeps somebody in remand forever. And a lawyer could say delay, 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 delay. We got the man can't pay. And you re- remain in remand at taxpayers' expense for years. And then come on a trial that years later. And then they find evidence collecting a sloppy way. This, that. And then you could sue the state now and get back a piece of money. You're going in jail. You have phone. Them have iPhone 15 already. <laughs> I still, I trying to see if to upgrade, what to do. Find my little dongle longer to put together to buy a new phone. And them men have phone calling shots on people from inside the jail. And we just accepting this as a society. We don't want to, we're watching people who are responding and solving their own problems and getting their own justice with brute force. And we, our response is still docile. Let me put it like that, right? Well, I saw, uh, who was it? I can't remember the name now, but I, uh, I think it was Rudal Munilal, was it? Who was talking about the fact that, and, and Alexander said it himself, where if police had shot up them people in that community, the country was going to stop. Only well, remember the country stopped a few times with that. Eh? The country stopped a few times where people come out in the road. This is the community now, not necessarily the criminals. The community responded in a big way. Block roads, block the roads in the, in, the, in, the, in the capital. Man can't go to work. Man has to turn back, right? And according to Munilal and Alexander as well, things like this happen and then there's no response from the community. The community remain quiet. And I want to say that a part of the reason there's no response is likely due to the fact that if I would have feel like if I put myself out there and I put my face out there to protest that, there's no protection for me. When they come for my family, there's no there's no protection, there's no recourse. So I might just pat down. Whereas if the police do that, who you're charged with the responsibility of protecting us and they kill somebody, let me say I assume is unjust, and I go out there and protest. I, d- I don't think police come in to just reprisal killing my whole family. It's probably not going to happen, right? But I just I just put in that out there to say that the water is boiling and we just we just sitting down in the water, right? The temperature rising and we're getting accustomed to the new temperature. And jumping out is important. Whether we jump out by giving the state the rights to move on people with brute force and, and, and get rid of people or, or, or change the way they operate, or let me start, let me start to exit Ghana oil. And <laughs> <laughs> Ghana oil, the flight is about 45 minutes. Or let me keep me here. I go suffer now. I go in a country where the team does win and them things. Right? So, uh, uh, one more thing on that on that crime situation that I did like that, the, and I, I, again, I, I saying all that to say I wish the best to the opposition leader and the prime minister, whether it's window dressing or whatever. I wish the best on their crime talks, and I'm hoping. I mean, I am naively hoping that it goes somewhere and something come out of it, so that the both government and opposition could uh, could could say that I affected by this in the same way, my supporters affected in this in the same way. Let me empower the police and the army and them kind of thing. To move to get some people to let we Philippine all this thing is Philippine or let we um uh, not Qatar uh, what's the next people name let we Singapore all this thing where criminals must be must be the ones who had to jump out and we don't have to worry about jumping out right but uh, there's a article that I saw from in the Guardian as well titled reconsider diverting customers to ATMs 
is an important call that I want to highlight. Opposition leader Kamala Prasad Bissessa is urging the banking community to reconsider having the public as well as micro and small business operators forcibly use ATM machines for financial deposits. In a news release on Friday, Prasad Bissessa said recently, Local commercial banks have lately been directing many transactions to ATMs, and while this might be standard practice for other parts of the world, in TNT, under the current crime surge, this process leaves clients vulnerable to brutal criminals. Quoted as saying here, since, the, since there are financial limits on each deposit transaction, a single customer could spend several minutes at the ATM machine, leading to long lines that quickly grow, leaving bank customers standing on the street with cash on their person for extended periods of time according to leader Kamala, opposition leader Kamala Pazabi Sesso. Let me add to that, right? A lot of times, if I don't want to deal with the lines and I work in the day, the best time for me to go and do this, some of these deposits would be at night where they have the um, the drop boxes, not just the ATM, where you could go and unlock the drop box and put it in, right? Same scenario. If I go into a drop box at night, it, it, it is known that I have cash on me. Suppose I follow, we live in a, we live in a we, we, we place dark. Right? She noted that the situation of bank customers standing on the street with cash occurs in an environment where several customers have been assaulted and robbed, even killed after patronizing banks at all levels. But don't forget, Kamala, that the banks are offering a whopping, what it was, $75? There was a $75 reward if you report that bank workers are setting up people. She recalled that only a few weeks ago, an on-duty of security officer was murdered while at an ATM in Kunupia. Pasad Bissessa also pointed out that there, are, there have been other instances of armed security guards being ambushed and attacked while transferring money. Another thing to pay attention to, again, what I try to do is use the drive through ATMs as much as possible. I'm not taking out or depositing no big set of money, but the issue is that the, the criminal may not know this. Like they, we talk about this the other day with the woman who they rush and they ain't get no money from her at all. I still in the same predicament if they run into me, whether I have money or not. So I want to applaud the call from Kamala Basad Bissessa to ask the banks. I, again, again, I strongly recommend that the Bankers Association critically review the diversion of these deposit transactions and ATMs towards creating the safest setting for its clients. Small business women and men are much more defenseless than armed security officers in the current atmosphere of rampant lawlessness, especially under a government that has all but given up on addressing the violent crime. You must take a little dig at your opposition, right? Coming from Guyana. Coming from Guyana. Just Christ. You make such a good call, babe. Must take a swing at the man. All right, but this is an important call and one that I thought I should highlight as well because it does put, put us at a disadvantage. And citizens at large, but particularly business people, it shows you how these politicians could respond to their base when needed, right? Because I am sure that um, internal pressure from her supporters could call for her to make a call like this against the banks. You know what I mean? Politicians don't really say much bad about the banks. You, know? you ever notice that? They don't really say them too bad about the banks. You know? But as we are on the topic of the UNC, I saw something very interesting, right? <laughs> the UNC is going down our road here. <laughs> a matter of fact, wait, I'm supposed to be playing music too. I forget about the music part of this. Yeah? Hey, one thing with Oli, right? Oli knows how to make a man feel bad. You know? Every time I put an episode and... Um, and like I don't say anything in the episode, but I play music for the whole episode. Everybody's tell me, everybody's tell me, boy, that's the best episode you ever do. So what they trying to tell me is hush. <laughs> what they trying to say, hush with all the set of old talk and play music. But let me hush with the old talk and play music, right? A part of this episode was I can't remember how I came up with the with the with the idea during the course of the week, right? But I was walking down memory lane. And going through some of these songs that came out of Jamaica in particular, that shape our youth too, you know what I mean? A part of, as much as we love Soka and we love um, Calypso and them things, and that is what I always stick to. For a long time now, I've been saying I had to go back to some songs from Jamaica. <laughs> some dancehall. Oh, this is not dancehall, you know, and this is not reggae. This is what we used to call dub. <laughs> and you see in these, in these times where time's hard and man trying to make ends meet. And criminal trying to take away the little bit that we have, it reminds me of a song like this. How your memory is? That boy left from out of the yard from morning, and him don't come back. Is him a everything just get and keep up my nerves? I so run left Jamaica and go live at Kingston. Mm -hmm. I put a horse eh, running no miserable. If you live with your granny, you wait on granny too. A horse eh, granny no love the cousin. Fib 
be granny, she cost me everything. Granny, stop hollering out my name. Granny, you call it me name in vain. Granny, where you are calling me for? Me soon left you, I go live with mama. Imagine, I can't take this country what we live in. Look how much money we have here, pay for chicken. Rice and flour and can meal is a sin. Who I buy a milk and me can't buy the tin. Can't even get sugar now to do some sweetening. I soon run the Jamaican go live in a parade. Oh Lord of mercy, I have to sing. Oh no, help me now. <clears throat> I used to turn can meal and give me that. But that was long. I can't turn can me no more of me yard Cause things get hard, you know, lad Me say nowadays, rice can no oh, oh lord Chicken can no oh, flower It can out of space Wheel up a rhythm there, I can't, I can't kiss the note ya Come again one more time there for me Oh, hear me now Granny, stop hollering out me name Granny, how you calling me name in vain Granny, how you call me name for Me so left you, I go live with mama And who said, Granny no miserable If you grow with your granny, you will turn granny too And who said, Granny don't love the cousin For me granny, man, she cost me everything Son, I always tell you, you feel look before you leave You can't plan can and a piece you want reap You do start the journey, then how you feel rich Take up the broom, cause the yard was sweep Look by your bed, you know spread it up with your sheet Me tell you for the son, I'll know you don't do it Turn some can meal, let me get it to eat I saw so go me have cause me lost me false teeth Granny, stop hollering out me name Granny, you call it me name in vain Granny, why you want to call me for? Me so left you, I'm gonna live, live with mama, mama. And let me tell you something. I just could, I couldn't play that without playing this, right? This this, this also had to play, right? Just for this for a little bit, right? <laughs> Sir, I want to you. You get mad? Mad? Shut. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. Love. Love. I can't take it no more. in this episode, man. Like, I run from the dub in the list one. <sighs> on the topic of Kamala Passat Vises, I saw this thing on Instagram that was quite, um, I don't know if to call it alarming, strange. This, I just, I, I'm not sure what's the word I'm looking for. But, it went around social media and many, many people send this to me as soon as they see it. Which, I've I taken that to mean only want me to talk about it, right? But I'm not sure what only exactly want me to say. Right? The, 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 what I'm going to play for you here, is the voice of a gentleman by the name of Muti X, right? <laughs> <laughs> Who starts off as being Mute. And if you know the name Mute, we could talk a little bit about what the name Mute means to Trinidad in a minute, right? But it's your Mute spelled with an X. And on social media, you're known as Mute with the X. So it's M-O-U-T-T-X-T. Mute with the X. And then he ended up just being Mute X, right? <laughs> now, I don't know. I, I mean... I've never been the most politically correct person, so I, I, I struggle to find words sometimes. I don't want to make it seem like I'm making no joke or nobody, but Mute have some kind of, um, should, what is it called, a different ability? Or, I don't know, I don't know if, I, I, I hope, I, I don't know if I'm saying the right thing. I know it's not mental, but it, they have some kind of physical, what is that, a challenge? I'm not sure it is, you know what I mean? He have a, some, his fingers are a little stiff, he have a little stiff walk. I don't know what it's caused. I think he talk about it. Uh, like an extreme form of arthritis, but I can't, I can't remember exactly what was the words he used. But if you know Muti with the X, you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> and I saw, strange enough, as, as, if, as if anything should be strange in this country, you know what I mean? I saw Muti with the X on a UNC political platform, in a purple jersey nonetheless. 
I don't know if anybody tell Mooty the jersey, like yellow is the code, like he didn't find out yellow is the code, but it might be hard for him to change quick too, so I'm not sure if that is part of the reason. But Mooty with the X, I want to listen to him on the political platform. We're here for people who don't have no job. Food prices. Every <laughs> so, that's my... It was a little clip, right? It, did, it, it didn't get into exactly what he talked about, but he was on the political platform. <laughs> and you know, well, you know how the political platform is good, right? Anytime you anytime you show up, once you show up and you say something, people will clap and go with it. But I, I do find it strange. <laughs> I do find it passing strange that somebody in this country by the name of Mute could be in a, on a political platform complaining about jobs and food prices. No, this is where I just want to get into trouble. You know? I always remember Ian Allen being on a TV station and talking about a certain family and their business and no longer being being able to be on that station, right? They're being fired, basically, right? <laughs> but I, I, I just want you to take a little moment to Google some names for me, right? Because... Mute not like Thomas and Shepard and these things where everybody names so and uh, we don't know if it's family and people ask me, were you related to the Shepard and them down in point? And I say, well, me and no, you, know, you gotta ask my mother and think, Mute is not one of those names in Trinidad and Tobago. If your name is Mute, you're related to all the Mutes and you know where your family, right? Let me don't, let me don't pretend. Right? <laughs> um, I just want you to, to, to appreciate <laughs> the holdings that companies owned by people with the name Mute have, right? I just wanted to appreciate it. There's somebody by the name of Victor Mute. Salute him. Y'all know how I feel about the 1% already. I feel we should all aspire to achieve what they have achieved. I think it's within, it's within all of us to achieve what the 1% has achieved. And I always come here and say that the 1% is not a fixed year. It's at a time, Kupalani and them was 1%, and Dilemma and them was 1%. And they might be 4, 5, 6, 7 now, but they ain't one. But Mute, <laughs> there's certainly one of the names out up there. So when I look up Victor Mute or I look up Mute group of companies, I see names, little companies, small companies called um, Vemco, <laughs> Agostini. <laughs> I see Prestige Holdings, a little company by the name of Prestige Holdings that holds franchises for Starbucks, KFC, Pizza Hut. TGI Fridays, Subway. I'm going to click on Pizza Hut. I wonder if I'll get any information about Prestige Holdings. You know what I mean? Maybe maybe, maybe they might have it here. Am I wrong? Am I, I'm going to make sure I'm coming from good sources. Yeah, I see in logos here like KFC, Pizza Hut, Fridays, Subway, and uh, Starbucks. You know what I mean? When last you eat in them places? Should I look at uh, Vemco and like what products they carry? Like what? Vemco is a distributor, right? Does Vemco do manufacturing? I'm not sure. But um, it's a lot like Swiss, Kerrygold. Purina, Quaker, Otis, Punk, Maya, Pepperidge Farm, Dole, Trop Tropicana, Prego. Why can not it have the Swans? Uh, listen, the list goes on and on and on and on. Dawn, Super Cow Milk, <laughs> long list. Should I, should I click on another one? What, what Agostini does do? I'm a little company named Agostini in this country. You know, what, what them fellows and them is do? What they do? Interiors? <laughs> they do distribution? <laughs> FMCG. Let me click on FMCG and see where it's have here on Augustine. You know what I mean? This might be good research for me to do. I should know these things offhand. So when you look at when you look at the size of these companies, right? <laughs> and what they do and what they mean to the country and how much <laughs> we look at Christian Mute. I, I I again I'm assuming I could probably be wrong, but I, I would think that this youth named Mute X is probably a part of this family. <laughs> So when he, on a, on a political platform, talking about food prices and salaries and so on, and he related to one of the countries that have the biggest impact on retail in the country, <laughs> and would easily be one of the largest private sector employers in the country. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure how it resonates, but again, the political platform is a funny place. The political platform is a funny place. That is a place where... There's not a whole lot of background. It's about likability. And UNC definitely going for a play on likability here. They definitely have a target audience. And they're looking at this group of youths now who sees these um, social media stars or the Zessa movement or the Trinidad movement as their, 
uh, I don't want to say I, I don't want to say idol, but they like them. They follow them, and the, the the messages that come from these guys are going to have more impact than the messages that come from a Kamala Prasad Bisses or a Rudal Munilal or a Tim Gopi Singh. You know, they, so they they tapping into a certain demographic here. And again, we see in the early moves in the long game for election 2025. But um, Mute, maybe we find a different set of things to talk about, right? You know what I mean? If there are so many issues in this country, you could certainly pick others <laughs> than to try to talk about poor, the plight of poor people. But again, you, sir, you, you, you can't beat it. It's, 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 hard to, um, it's hard to challenge them. Now, should I, should I, should I get back into into the xenophobic nature of this country where we don't want certain people to represent we can hear from here we like them christmas time to play a little music and a little parang and thing but you know what i mean we, we do we really don't like them when it comes to the foreign representation i think that's why i was talking about the jamaican thing you know because jamaican music is such a big part of our culture but we're very um we're very closed when it comes to our approach to uh, 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 what do you want to call it? Like national pride? or <laughs> I'm sure if they call it national pride, to be honest, or what it is. But this pageant thing started to get even more legs than it had last week. I was saying, I talked about that thing a little bit last week, or when was that week? Before, whenever I spoke about it. And the story had really just come out. I just saw the story and talked about it a little bit, but I didn't know that this thing would go for so far. I didn't know Jack Warner was a judge. I, I think that that is that is epic. Jack Warner. No, I want to say that. They, listen, <laughs> Jack Warner, hundred fifty years old, and he's judging beauty pageants. In a beauty pageant, you have to watch the beauty. Jack Warner must be Cassie. He Cassie so well at this age. He can't, He is. I, I think will be that great. Um, you also have to try and listen to the answers that the the the, 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 the contestants give. <laughs> Jack Warner care here. <laughs> Let me be realistic about this thing. I mean, come on. Come on. All you really feel Jack Warner hearing is up there. I doubt it. I doubt it. I doubt it. But Jack Warner was listed as one of the judges in this tournament. In this um in this pageant. He, you, can't, you, can't, you can't go wrong in Trinidad in the way. Trinidad is a, is, is a very, very entertaining place, regardless of where. So let me let me just go to our article from The Guardian, right? Because surprisingly. Jack Warner make a statement about this. I, I don't know who contact Jack Warner to be a judge in this, and I don't know how they get he to say yes. He he really had nothing to do any day coming to this man board. He tried to get back any political thing and the local government election the other day. He must be finding enough attention. There. This man here, beauty pageant, he and that. So from around the dollar to the Guardian, Jack Warner. One of the judges in the, in the 2023 Miss Grand International Competition admits he had and still has reservations about a foreigner representing his country on an international stage. Warner's comments follow the public outcry that, the, that countries, sorry, the, the, the public outcry that continues following the pageant organizer's decision to stick with the controversial decision of Milady Matarano as the winner of the competition. Warner said he had articulated his reservations to his follow ju- fellow judges over selecting a foreigner during Sunday's final. However, he said he is standing by the decision as a member of the judging panel. I do not believe that a foreigner could represent the country, but I was part of a team and I subscribed to what they agree upon. It is what it is. What it is Warner said. Asked about the public outcry over the decision, Warner said there is good and bad. Is good and bad in what is being said? But preferred not to go into it any further. What happened is he couldn't remember you as a judge. No. Them, them asked Jack Warner. Only for getting Jack Warner age or. When them call it to ask him about this, he say, um, beauty pageant? What, what, beauty pageant? Who's who, who the beauty pageant? Donald Trump? He, he got no idea that he was a part of this. Yeah. Meanwhile, another judge said yesterday, this uh, another judge yesterday dispelled rumors which claimed Matarano was favored by some members of the panel. This is totally false. The pageant's organizer, Stolen Productions Limited, right? <laughs> Stolen Productions Limited is the name of these people. Now, I don't know if you ever had a business idea, right? Or if you ever registered a business or you had something that you wanted to do or or in this in this era of micro-entrepreneurship, you know, you 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 set up your little your little side hustle, you make a little cake, whatever it is, you is, 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 is do and sell, you buy and sell. You know how much effort goes into naming your company you know when you when you when you're in that initial phase of startup you ain't selling nothing yet but you're trying to you're trying to find a name for your business and your brand and you're, you're trying to get your logo developed and do what 
you know do do put yourself out there you, you, you think of what that feels like and when you when you when you settle on a name, you know what I mean? Just like I was talking about Presti Jewel, when they come up with Vemco, they would have several different ideas as to what they will call their company. And then they, they, they do this one, and the one that you chose, you think it will it inspires you, it moves you, it makes you feel good about the business. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's sending the right message to your to your customers. It's something that you will sit down on for years. I always talk about Cache as being one of the biggest brand names built from scratch in Trinidad and Tobago because from a little closed store in the drag to moving on to Frederick Street and building from that standpoint where Cache is now a, a national brand. Anybody who knows Cache know where it is and thing. You know what I mean? You, you, you put so much thought and effort into that name. I want to know what was your intention when you come up with the name Stolen Production Limited. <laughs> what about that make you feel good and say, you know, this is something that we should really do or really interested in getting this thing done. You know what I mean? I, I, would, I would love to know. Now, I'm going on the Instagram page, right? And I will tell you that they deleted, they had the listing of all the judges for the competition uh, as individual posts. <laughs> But it looked like they delete that. It looked like the, the heat turning up on these stolen production people, you know. So they, they slowly but surely starting to, to clean up the image. But I don't know. With a name like Stolen Production Limited, I know how much cleaning up you could really do. But with the judges selecting a foreigner to represent Trinidad and Tobago, the, 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 the stories coming out on the night had said that People in the crowd were upset. They were upset by how late the program had started, how the program was flowing. And then, of course, with Milady, that came out to be that that was a big issue on the night because apparently the first question she was asked, she asked for she said, um, hey, what to do for me now? Bring, 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 bring a translator now. Bring a translator. You know what I mean? Bring somebody who could tra- convert. It. I mean, come on. We in a pageant here. We need translators. That's a normal thing we see in pageants all the time. Now, usually we would see that in the final, right? Because the final is being hosted in a country where the language is not the same of all the contestants, right? So if it's in the States and you have somebody from the Czech Republic, Czech, Miss Czech Republic will come up with a translator to break down this thing and break down the question and them kind of thing, right? So <laughs> I, I'm not sure of any example I could find where the local contestant going up need a translator in the local, the domestic language, that the, the home country talking, right? You know what I mean? That, 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 that would be a little bit odd. So people apparently were upset on the night and basically saying that, hey, what is going on here? How is she being selected on them thing? But she eventually got through the answers to the questions. She apparently answered them in English eventually <laughs> after some after some coaxing. You know, it's ain't easy to get a question in English. Change the question to Spanish in your mind. Frame your answer in Spanish, right? Then change back the answer into English before you say it. That could slow you down. That ain't going to be easy. And the pageants have a way when they ask you that question and you're on the spot and you're nervous. It's done, you're done under some pressure already to come up with a good answer at that point in time. So it's like, it's like come on, Ollie, 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 kill the woman. What is happening? So we are at this point now where we have the Venezuelan, Miss Venezuela, Trinidad. Miss Trinidad and Tobago, Miss Grand International Pageant coming out. And unfortunately... The woman says she getting death threats. Who is threatening my lady? Why are they doing this? I don't know when since we care about pageants so much, you know, but Venezuelan beauty queen gets death threats. My lady Maturano, the Venezuelan national who won a beauty contest to represent Trinidad and Tobago, the Miss Grand International pageant, has been receiving death threats. The matter has been reported to the police. A source close to the beauty queen confirmed yesterday. It is the latest development is what in what has been a week of online hate leveled against the beauty queen. Her victory in last Sunday's Miss Grand TNT pageant was an uproar with many people taking to social media to question her eligibility and criticize the judge's decisions. In the last days following the pageant, the franchise holder, Mr. and Mrs. Grand, all right, the, 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 the franchise holders, Sharice Parsons, who have also been trolled on social media, stated categorically that the 29 year old businesswoman who operates her own registered company met all the criteria required by the local body. Late last week, Matarano got a call. Matarana called for enter the hate and negativity, but the attacks have exemplified. Get the so and so out of here or dead. Lord. <laughs> Posted one comment <laughs> below a video real feature in Matarana, which was uploaded to Why are they threatening the woman? This is not nice. What, what, why were they that, that going a little bit too far? Because, I, again, I would like it would be so good to hear from past Miss Trinidad and Tobago's, whether it's for Miss World, 
Miss Universe, uh, wherever, wherever the pageants and the competition, whether it's the one with the strong thing, you know, it has some strong people just go up for a kind of pageant. So that's nice a pageant where you're strong and you go and you pose and thing. I would like to hear any sports person who represents Trinidad and Tobago, any musician or artist who represents Trinidad and Tobago, anybody in any international competition, I want to hear how much support you all got from these very social media and armchair people who complaining about me lady. <laughs> when we have artists, sportsmen, journalists, we have every profession in the world going up to represent Trinidad and Tobago all over the world, and it's crickets. <laughs> It's crickets just like the CPL cricket. We don't care. We don't know who is the lady. We don't know who represents in Trinidad. We don't know who we don't know what is the name of the competition. We only like people after they win. <laughs> only know how about our water soccer warriors to talk about, right? Get used to that, you know, because we just only support people when they win. <laughs> we don't know none of these people. We don't know nobody who's represent Trinidad and Tobago. But all of a sudden. They pick a Venezuelan one to represent Trinidad and Tobago. And the place is not out crying an uproar. You had to like here, you know. Here nice, you know. <laughs> so, only so, threatening me lady now. And listen, as much as I want to defend these people for this election, and, and the bottom line for me is that I don't care. That I'll be honest with you, I don't care. People don't want to say that because people want to spend their two minutes on social media. The only two minutes out of their whole life where they care about a pageant is when they hear this woman win the thing. But I here to say, I don't care. Me don't know who this represents and that and no pageant. I don't know. When, you see, when we, reach, when we start to reach top 10, that when I just start to put on pageant. I don't watch no pageant. As a matter of fact, full disclosure, I went Wendy when I was sleeping. <laughs> Sleep. I guess they have that one I was sleeping like hell. I was sleeping on my grandmother's bed when and my mother wake me up and say, grandmother's wake me up and say, Cory, we win, we win Miss Universe. I started to cry one time. <laughs> <laughs> me hear what Wendy say. Me know what question she answer. Me know how the gong look. I don't know how the bad suit look. I find out all them things after. So uh, could, could we all admit first, please, before we get into this any deeper? We care as not about no pageant. Uh, let us be honest. We care as not. We do not care. And you see all them wicked people who walk out to the thing in movie town when it was happening. So all they care is not neither. All all lazy contestants family. That why all they walk out when all they realize all their family lost it. Who does go pageants in this country? Everybody's just go to support their family. If you have a sister or your friend or your girl or whoever going in any pageant, die the only people who is in that crowd. Nobody else wasn't there. That why all they walk out early when all they realize me lady winning. So as I was saying, they delete the judges from the social media platform, right? But if my memory serves me right. One of the judges was Jack Warner. Jack Warner is the only judge who is a thousand something years old. Everybody else was young. One is the young Chin, who is the son of, son of Derek Chin, who is the owner of Dai Chin Enterprises, or Dai Chin Enterprises, a uh, movie talk. Uh, one of them was a beauty influencer, what do you call them? What do you call them? A social media influencer by the name of Mix. You know what I mean? So uh, if anybody had to judge beauty, I suppose she would be a good person to judge beauty. She on social media. Uh, I think she have like lines of waist slimming thing. You know, you know, you know, they, 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 have, a, they, have, a, they have a playbook for social media influencers, right? <laughs> a part of the playbook is that you have some products selling for either your face or your body or to rub on your belly and make your fat disappear. Or you have, um, what do you call them, um... We always call them thing with a waist trainer. You have a waist trainer. You have some tight something selling. You know what I mean? You have um you just, you just go by one of these people who's roll out your belly with a piece of bamboo, you know what I mean? To make your belly flat. And Meeks have all of the above. Meeks have an endorsement for every one of them people who I call there. You know what I mean? She's very, very busy on the social media. I wish I mean she's do good. She looked good to me and everything, and she's a pretty popular influencer. When you look up uh, uh, 30 something thousand followers, so good, good judge for a panel. Young Derek Chin, I mean, son of a businessman, you know about nice woman, right? So you could judge our pageant. <laughs> Jack, I guess, I guess, <laughs> think of this, right? I like the little podcast and I like, you know what I mean, building a little profile and them kind of things. So if somebody called me to judge our pageant, I feel that would be a good little look for me for the podcast. I could grow my viewers and thing, grow my little listeners. But when I see the letterhead and they say, hi, Corey Shepard, we think, and we love your podcast, and we'd like you to be a judge on the signed Stolen Productions Limited. Mm. 
I ain't so sure. But when they send Jack that one and say stolen productions, this look right at home. <laughs> right at home. I'll be there. Just tell me where to be. Just tell me time and place. Where it is virtual is in person. Where's the situation? So the pageant went on. The lady gets selected. We forget it had a Miss Grandman too, but it have a Miss Grandman. He win. And one of the funnier things I've seen going around, right? <laughs> is that they're on a PR run. They're on a PR run. Because now, if you ask me, what I think is that when I saw Miss Grand, Miss Grand is not a very recognized competition. It is from Malaysia, I believe, this year, hosting in Vietnam, and they're trying to build the name for their tournament. So when I went on their website, what we're going through here is not uncommon, right? Miss Japan, Black Like Tar, Miss Ireland, Indian. It is, they, they're looking like they're looking for controversial picks, and that will get them to rise to the top of the pageant world very quickly, I think. Uh, especially where, because nobody will care about no Miss Universe and Miss World until they win. If everybody else is like we, we don't care about that until we, we get a winner, you know. That does not hold what it held when it was Penny and Wendy and Gisela around. Let me not pretend that these pageants hold the same place in our hearts. They don't. So I think that a part of the selection process is to make sure you have a controversial pick. Make the thing big. Because when Miss Grand come out next year, people people will know about the name of the tournament. The, what do you call the thing? The competition? The pageant. Right? People will know about it at that point in time. And let me tell you something. Next year. Next year. Only look out for it. They mark my words. You see next year? Miss Grand International go be a man. They, they, go, they go just do control. They, they, I get them right. Do the most controversial thing you could do and big up your thing so that it grow fast. Right? Which it has done. Because we, before last... Nobody didn't know his name is Grand International and nobody didn't care. But all of a sudden, everybody care. Now, Express again. Milady and Misguided Xenophobia. This is the run that the, the pageant holders seem to be going on. They seem to be going on a run that everybody who vex with a, a Venezuelan, and I think is a, is a normal thing to see an outcry like this. It would be expected. If I, if I have a pageant and I select somebody like this, I feel I could put together a decent PR campaign in advance that says why we should not be upset about this. And if I know we plan up the thing to put a Venezuela under, I feel I'm planning a better PR campaign than these people, right? I'll explain. But the article says, to some extent, we have always been Venezuelan, particularly when it comes to certain historical moments, cultural festivals, and influences in the Spanish language on places and names throughout TNT. Yet largely because of mass migration... Our xenophobia towards Venezuelan nationals from ta- or emerges towards Vene- Venezuelan nationals from time to time. Most recently, the decision to award Venezuelan citizen Milady Maturano the title of Miss Grand TNT raised many eyebrows on the basis that Maturano could not truly represent his country on an international stage because she was a non-national. Firstly, non-native Trinidadians have always represented us, particularly in sports. Chris Birchall, one of the midfielders who helped us qualify for our first FIFA World Cup in 2006, was born and attended high school in England. He was eligible to play for the Soko Warriors because of his Trinidad-born mother. <laughs> in 2015, Canadian-born gymnast Marissa Dick... These people from Stolen Productions is reading the news and think, why are they taking the most controversial thing Marissa Dick wasn't supposed to represent nowhere? Tamer Williams was he... Per- anyway. <sighs> in 2015, Canadian-born gymnast Marissa Dick acquired dual citizenship based on her mother's Trinidadian passport to compete on the 2016. These people really is named stolen. Look at the example they use. And they're, they're looking for anything stolen. And while a Venezuelan-born person representing TNT at a beauty pageant may be new, for other parts of the world, such as Chile, Portugal, Italy, and Italy, Venezuelan-born women representing other countries is fairly pot- typical today. Did he just say that Venezuelan-born women representing other countries is fairly typical? You've got to give my evidence on that. Public outrage against Maturano representing TNT then may just be down to because she's a non-native, but specifically because she's a Venezuelan. And in this case, unlike a team of Olympic athletes or footballers, a Venezuelan won an individual competition ahead of two Trinidadians. On some level, Maturano's win might have materialized on the basis of xenophobia that migrants are a threat to our jobs. Maturano is now not only the face of TNT when she travels to Vietnam for the Miss Grand International Competition, her face also serves as a stand-in for the entire Venezuelan population in Trinidad. <laughs> we now have a specific target to channel our xenophobia. The xenophobia is misguided since I would argue that Venezuela has deeply influenced moments in our, in our national history, culture, and language. 
history of pre-Columbian Trinidad with a, I guess pre-Columbus is what I mean, pre-Columbian I guess, <laughs> would argue that some of our earliest settlers came from Venezuela. Much later, during the 19th century Venezuelan farmers would experience in cacao cult- cultivation we encourage a settling trend that does given rise to the name Coco Payals to improve agroeconomical production. All right, they went on and on about this, right? About Maruga and the basis of Venezuela here. So it was a whole thing about Parang and where music come from and all the fact that we have close ties with Venezuela. This is written by Jarel de Matas, a PhD candidate and teaching associate in the part- Department of English in the University of Massachusetts. <laughs> so salute to the Express for bringing a middle of the road type uh, I don't want to say defense necessarily, but a different viewpoint of this, right? So, this is what I was talking about in terms of non-nationals representing Trinidad. It's not, it's not uncommon for that to happen in sports and in business and so on. We must always remember that our anthem is written by a Guyanese dude, a guy called Pat Castani. Uh, well, one of the judges' father is a Guyanese man in the name of Derek Chin. Right, who own movie tour. <laughs> the biggest band on the road, which includes Tribe, Lost Tribe, Hearts, Rogue, who are getting inside them, is owned by a Guyanese man. <laughs> so the, the idea of, of, of non nationals is, is really a farce. It's really a farce. I think the way this was done and the way it being handled by the organizers is poor. The name of the organization, Stolen Productions, does not help. Uh, it could have been managed much better to get the support of of Trinidadians, even even though people there's a percentage of people who would always be upset by this. But we could she, she could have get the support if they did this, if they managed this better and more transparently, and also if they were prepared to talk about it in a way that makes sense. So I was listening to Red ninety six point seven this week, and <laughs> the organ the organizers right were on the station. That, now, this is the PR person, right? I didn't get the name of the person who represented them, or the PR, the PR person who represented them, right? But, boy, let me tell you something. He did, a, he did a horrible job, a horrible job. Number one, he came on the interview on the defensive. I think the, the interviewers on Red 96.7 weren't prepared either, as is a lot of times the case with interviews and urban radio and trend that. These fellas and them has been in the studio liming and playing music and talking. And then they get an interview. And every single thing they need to know about the person in front of them, they just had to ask them. They don't know no research, no set of background. They, 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 they don't have a clue. And, and social media is the most of the research, right? So the questions come from the most hot topics on social media. We see it all the time. But what was odd is that in what I would call a softball interview, nobody asking them any hard questions or anything. They meant botch it completely, and I wish I had recorded it. Because them fellows on them, basically, the, 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 the Trinidadian fellow, who is running the pageant or the PR person in the pageant? He starts off on the offense by saying, Wait, before we get into this interview, I just want to let everybody know that the words of our anthem say, Forged from the love of liberty in the fires of hope and prayer, with boundless faith in our destiny, <laughs> solemnly declare. And side by side, we stand. And this man went into the anthem, and I will tell you something, right? That man busts in the anthem about midway through. About midway through the anthem, he couldn't remember none of the lyrics. And it, 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 I, I, I'm thinking, but what do you think is Martin Luther the King? <laughs> Who you think you're talking about, Michael? What, what, what kind of speech you make? Nobody cares about no pageant. You taking on this because of social media commenters. Who I guarantee you comment on this and move on with their lives immediately because nobody care about pageant, especially Miss Grand International. Nobody cares about that. Even if this girl go there and win nobody is going to care any more than they cared before. It does not matter. Inconsequential, right? <laughs> but you going in there to make this thing... Again, this is why I said the whole thing was is designed to create controversy for these purposes. And if that wasn't bad enough, my guy decided he'd go in next door by I-95.5. Now, this was a horrible idea, right? <laughs> going to I-95.5... Is a different ball game to go in red 96.7. Because again, while I say that typically on urban radio, people are underprepared, they are not well read. It, it might not even be necessary for them to be well read. All the men come to do is talk about what happened today and and, and, and share some vibes on the radio station and 
lift people's spirits while they're driving home. There's no effort to do anything else except entertain. And and, and sometimes the most basic form of ent- entertainment too, you know what I mean? They, 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 they're unprepared. It's, it's, it's something else. It's hard to listen to. So as much as I like radio and thing, it's, it's hard to listen to some of these stations where they, they, it, it's, it's lacking substance, right? The same cannot be said about I-95.5. <laughs> These are people who have not just been on radio for a long time. They are well read. They well read even if so. I like Dale and Tony a lot. A part of my that's, I idolize them for that. I pattern myself. I mean, I know we're near them, right? But I take example from them in terms of how they show up, how they show up for topics, how they prepare, how they talk, how they show up for interviews. You understand? And they don't shy away from the hardest topics in any way. They are going to be very direct with you about questions. Again, some other people who pass through I ninety five would be. George Umbala Joseph, uh, who I talk about a lot. They're, they're men not hiding from nobody and answering no question. David Abdullah was there. They, they, they're very direct, well-read, very educated people. And I ain't talking about no academic, when no, no, I'm talking about street sense, book sense, political sense, you know what I mean? Good sense of what entertains. <laughs> the best of them pass through there. Um, uh, Ardine Sergi used to do a show with Mariano Brown that I used to enjoy listening to. Louis Lee Singh was on there talking about issues and so on. Them is fellas who will entertain and educate and they, they, they seem to be intellectually curious whether they're on the radio station or not. So even if you catch them on a moment where they're not on air and didn't prepare to talk about a topic, they could give you a sensible answer on any topic, whether it be sports, culture, music, news, whatsoever the situation is, right? <laughs> And one of those people is Darian Marcel, right? <laughs> Darian Marcel has been on radio for a long... I remember when he was... Ju- well, what I thought was just starting off on radio. I don't know if he had a history before 95.5, but he is direct, hard hitting, doesn't shy away from issues. If, if you ask me, slight little p in him, you know what I mean? Slight little p in him, but again, he's going to be hard to... Tr- so if, I might say he's slight little p in him, but if I sit down in a room... And he used to ask me directly, okay, so what would make you say I slide here? It's going to be a rough debate because them fellas are not prepared and they're doing this for a living and they're good at it, right? Why did Ole carry Milady by Darian Marcel? Somebody could tell me why they ca- what, what, When Ole see I-95.5 door, they should have passed straight. All you have fully well know, the man who represented Ole from here don't know the anthem, right? He's, he's struggling to come up with the anthem, right? <laughs> why are they carry these people there? And I, I want to put it to you like this, right? The question that you're going to hear him ask me lately, I have a strong suspicion that all of them in that room might have trouble with that question. I had my own troubles with the question, but here it went, right? My dear, uh, no, I know, I know. Let me ask you one more question, please. What are the watchwords of Trinidad and Tobago? Excuse me? What are the watchwords of Trinidad and Tobago? You don't understand. No, and I have to go now because I have. I know you have to go now, yes. but you you don't know what are the watchwords of Trinidad and Tobago. I have to go now. I understand why you have to go. I understand. <laughs> I want to thank all of you. Thank you. <laughs> what, 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 this this PR campaign that only running to try to make it seem as if this is the most important thing happening in Trinidad and Tobago. Now that's not going on work. Settle all yourself. Go all your pageant. Nobody can stop all you. Know. We must always remember. D- d- don't forget that this is a private organization. Miss Grand International is a private competition. Stolen Productions is obviously private. You see this thing where you could label yourself Miss Trinidad and Tobago, and we start to put now some kind of national stock in this thing. This is not a public tournament. Pageant. This is not a public thing. This is not no taxpayers' money in going into this. These people have to raise their own for all they pick who all they want and go which part all they have to go. But only on this PR campaign and only embarrassing all yourself at every turn of the way. You all get coming off as smug and arrogant for no reason. Darren Marcel also asked them. He said, Here I hear I hear you use one of them fellas woman. <laughs> He didn't say it like that, right? He said, I hear all you, you and one of them fellas dealing. That's true. It's not true because one of the rumors is that the young chin, that might be bird, or they say the man who knew them all about, that he bird, because this fellow was very adamant in the, in the, in the interview to that. No, she's taken. She's she's spoken for. She's she's not available to anybody. I just want that to be known that like it's that's your bird. Are you defending this woman? So she can't answer that. You know what I mean? Is that translator? Is that translator right? Truly walking with so. 
this is not coming off as good. <laughs> they also showed again, they pull it up where one of the rules for the pageant was that um uh you must not have no salaciousness. No salaciousness on the internet and so on. You mustn't have no salacious past, you know what I mean? And um, unfortunately, they pull up Materano. I mean, this is the internet era, so the pictures of salaciousness went around pretty quickly. But uh, my, my organizer, my PR guy, was very quick to say, well, that was in the past. That was in the past, and those are no longer. And she realized her mistakes and also. And I mean, <laughs> salute, salute, salute to Miss Grand International Trinidad and Tobago, right? But I think, you see, what one of the things, uh, the, 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 there's an article here saying that is envy, right? And I, I just want to address that. Let me get into that quick now. I'm not talking about my lady long. For somebody who's saying they don't care about pageant, this might be the longest topic for the episode. Know? And I, I have a, a sneaky suspicion that this story have more to give in time to come. More is going to come out of this very, very soon, right? But the headline is, Envy is to blame for opera over non-TNT beauty queen. <laughs> Envy and a lack of understanding about the Miss Grand Internet. Well, that is for damn sure. A lack of understanding about that is for sure. That is what the crux of the controversy surrounding the selection of Venezuelan Milady Matarano to represent Trinidad to be the Miss Grand International pageant in Vietnam in October, says Matarano's manager, Sharice Pollock. She's a manager. <laughs> you have a manager? Additionally, Parsons, architect and interior designer, has announced that she has initiated legal proceedings involving all parties responsible for distribution of... Okay. I done. As well, it's not a threatening legal thing. I finish. This story is over. Let me tell you what the real uproar is about, eh, Miss Parsons. The, the real uproar is nothing to do with no xenophobia. I'm pretty sure that they have nobody in the world who envy my lady. So certainly not in Trinidad. The issue is that when you choose a woman from Venezuela or from any other country, to represent us. It kind of sends the signal that way. So we don't have any beauty and brains and things that are locally grown that we could we could have. It's not the same as Chris Birchall, who have a grandparent or some relative that here that ties him to Trinidad and Tobago and is used to add to a Trinidad and Tobago team that we have. But there's no Soka Warriors or Strike Squad team that was ever put out with the majority foreigners ever. It's never happened. <laughs> it probably will never happen. Because it's going to be hard that there's a Trinidad team. I want us to go back to when it had Trinidad Red Steel and Barbados Royals or what, what, what Barbados name was before. Tridents or whatsoever the name was. The idea of franchise cricket was a hard thing for us to accept because we was back in Trinidad and it's not Trinidadians playing. That is not what this has nothing to do with envy. That is not an uncommon thing. As a matter of fact, I always wondered why CPL didn't name itself Georgetown Warriors and Port of Spain. Um, night Riders and name them after the cities similar to what is done in, 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 in India. But I think I, 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 I think the issue has to do with the fact that it could be seen as a slap in the face to the Trinidadian woman. And I want to use Love in there to tell you a little story. Well, this one is dedicated to West Indian women all over the world. Tell the world. Yeah, man. West Indian women are the best on the scene Any one of them could be my queen Some will trick you, some hard to please Just give me the woman from the West Indies West Indian women, they love to wine Even when it's not carnival time The way they move the sexy waistline Would make any man lose his mind They're very sweet and sometimes shy But they can be so very sly If you're a man who believes every lie When I say they love me, it's not a boast They make man run up in a light post It's hard to keep abreast Of all these women, I must confess They're prettier than the rest They win international beauty contests West Indian women are the best on the scene oh. Any one of them can be my queen Tell the Some world. will treat you some hard to please But give me the woman from the West Indies Some tend to get very fat but don't you be put off by that yes. Cause if she's overweight You have more of her to appreciate 
No one the other end of the scale Some of them maga and very frail Unlike fat ones, they don't have much meat But their bag of sugar is just as sweet West Indian woman and in West Francine Any one of them can be my queen Some men cheat you, some heart to please But can any woman from the West Indies Some will treat you like a boopsie Yam you out and take your money You wouldn't believe man so fool to make woman use them like tool But when she really loves you There's nothing in the world that she wouldn't do To make you live and feel like a king If you know it's true, raise your hand and sing West Indian woman are the best on the scene That girl, my lady, can be my queen Some of them tricky, some hard to please But the wicked woman from the best in this Gary Griffith says a police state <laughs> Can't make this up. Can't make this up. Imagine Kai Griffith saying as a police state. Well, yeah, article. We hear what this Griffith had to say here. Trinidad and Tobago is becoming a police state. <laughs> Anybody remember when Gary Griffith was police commissioner the kind of things he was being accused of? Anyway, former commissioner of police, national and national transformation alliance, political. It's still a national transformation. That's what Former commissioner of police, national. Former, form, pff, former commissioner of police. A National Transformation Alliance political leader, Guy Griffith, says Trinidad and Tobago is headed towards a police state. He was referring to the recent court order judgment in his favor. On September 11, Justice Devendra Rampasad blocked the FIU from accessing Griffith and his wife's bank accounts. The Griffiths had challenged the legality of a request by the FIU acting director Nigel Stoddard to several financial institutions for information on their accounts. The Griffiths claimed on Sunday, October. The Griffiths claim said October 28, 2022, the former top cop received information from an anonymous source that the FIU made a request to financial institutions for information on him and his wife, as well as, as other people and entities, 52 in all. I want to get to the part where you say is a police state. He quoted as saying this action blatantly violates the regulations of the, that govern the FIU. Griffiths said he was fortunate to have whistleblowers share information with him. However, he said. The abuse of power could be targeted against anyone, including persons close to and aligned with this present government. He outlined a list of acts which he said showed a clear pattern of abuse and steps to dictatorship and a police state. This would, of course, collapse the government and fresh elections in many other countries across the world. Yet the silence is deafening and even worse. Some continue to support this abuse. Our democracy is rapidly being eroded and this must end. So... The if, if people remember where that came from, Gary Griffith was or, or still is being accused of having uh having interfered with the process of the whole process of FULs, not just the granting of licenses, but the granting of dealer licenses and so on. And that that whole case or that whole matter seems to be continuing, or it is continuing, but he, he at least was able to stop them from going into his financial records and so on. And um it's, it's a funny thing when you hear somebody like Guy Griffith talking about the place becoming a police state. When even even the the from the from the standpoint of how it looked, when Gary was a police commissioner, it was the first time, at least that I could remember seeing, military type uniforms issued to regular policemen and women. And um and the type of police presence he used to see uh with his team at incidents or crime scenes. It it looked very um it looked very military in nature. <laughs> in addition to the fact that the police commissioner was very present and um, very visible and vocal about everything that was going on. It, 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 not just where crime and so is concerned, but I remember him as a commissioner, as a head man, <laughs> being very involved when they say Buju couldn't come to Trinidad because of his conviction and eventually they let him come. And Gary Griffith was on stage with Buju Manton. He was also on stage with his crew. Uh with Buju and talking about from double G to double B. <laughs> you know, so it's like, I agree with him in that it never looks good when a sitting government is sending police after what could be seen as their political opponents or, 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 the, or people in the opposition, right? It is a little worrying, but it's something that you typically see when you look at the way new governments or opposition's campaign. 
So uh, an opposition might campaign saying that we're going to bring down the corruption of the existing government, right? That's a very common thing. And we tend to like to see that as a, as a political, uh, as the electorate. We, 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 we want to see things like that because we don't want corruption to continue. So when you come and you say, I'm going to unlock them up, and, yeah, and everybody follow that. But I could just, just tell you, what the, when that is implemented, is a fine line between going after corruption on the governments that came before you and trying to use your power to, si to silence a political opponent. So I think that, that that issue with Gary Griffith is one that we must continue to look at because I would admit that I, I'm not a fan of politicians generally, but the circumstances under which Gary Griffith was moved, uh, let me just use the words uncomfortable. It was a little uncomfortable for me, the whole... Well, I sent a letter, and I sent a list, and he was top of the list, but then he prime minister again, and I give back Paula, Paula, and I say, here, what, take you off the list, and I, 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 that did not, um, it do pass the smell test, and we had to remember that the smell test is what it is, right? Even if these things don't go to court or can't be proven or anything like that, sometimes they don't look right, and we're good enough, we, we could see when the things don't look right, but the same could be said about some of the things that Gary Griffith did and was doing. I remember my man fall off a chair dead. <laughs> you understand when them fellows of this. So to see him have a headline saying the place stood in the police state is, is a little bit funny. But again, what do I know? All you don't want to hear what I had to say. All you only hear when I come to play music, you know? Then you mean to tell me, sir, you never do him nothing and him just fat up your eyes up? It's true. He make me eye black and blue then ask what the hell the police can do. <laughs> no mind ya, my dear. I go and pay him a visit. Who that? Police, boy blow. Oh, so you is the Babylon books that is causing disruption in my domestic affairs. I am Constable Brown, they call me Boy Blue. I have here a warrant to arrest you. Cause you meet up your girls with shit black and blue. Then ask what the hell the police can do. I come to show what police can do. I go and show what police can do. I have a button tough like rock stone. I go and introduce it to your jawbone. Back so your teeth till your moan and groan. Make your ears them ring like government phone. Drunk up your nose up they find your looks. Cause you shouldn't call me Babylon books. I come to show what police can do. I go and show what police can do. A long time you know this summer, you man. It seem like you love the beat up woman. Cause every little thing on the race on your hand. Like this on the bring them from this land. When we the police on the call Babylon. We they have to give them protection. Roses are red, violets are blue. Say them both bright, but not bright like you. Cause the beat of the church is so black and blue. They ask what the hell the police can do. I come to show what police can do. I go and show what police can do. I go and make you feel some Babylon lick. Babylon box and Babylon kick. Show me button down. Be now your problem. Make you learn to have respect for the law. Fracture your shin. Broke your knee up. Then you will know some me nasty up. Haul and pull you like a old crook. Cause they shouldn't call me Babylon books. I am Constable Brown. Them call me Boy Blue. I know you will know what one books can do. I come to show what police can do. I go and show what police can do. Almost every woman who walk this land have a books or two. It's part of the plan. Some drive for some drive a minivan. Some are politicians, some are Babylon. And when them war on racket by you, there's nothing in the world that you can do. Cause if you follow them, it's trouble for you. Cause there is a lot the police can do. I come to show what police can do. I go and show what police can do. I go and make you swallow all of your teeth. You live pan soup, can't eat no meat. And then I go and carry you down a station. Let me friend them get peace at the action. I did come for reason with you. Cause I know what woman can do. I am a man of the world like you. My woman could give me bun too. I was going to let you off of the hook. But you come and call me Babylon book. I going to show what police can do. I going to show what Gary can do. Ta ding biggie ding, pimpy ding ping. Well, you remember them days at dub? And let me tell you some more dub, right? Before I go into Angus Eve's greatest coach in the history of Trinidad and Tobago football. 
in the early days, for all you know who now born and thing, for all you know born, right? We all you could hear any music as a song come out. I see a Buju album come out, you get any song as he drop it, you get any song. Drake drop an album, everybody get it same time. Diddy drop an album last week, everybody get it same time. All of you know born and don't know what it was like to wait on radio to play a song because there's no other way to get a song but radio, right? <laughs> and when a song sing in Jamaica, Sometimes it takes six months. It's late in the year. Sometimes a year after the song now reach Trinidad because man has to go and buy physical record and bring down here. And St- um, Cleves and Crosby's and these places had to get them record first. And then them men had to go in the radio station, hear the record and like it and buy it. I don't read them, you know. It's not sort of rhythm where you get 10 songs and a thing, you know. <laughs> men had to go and buy 45 one by one. So when a rhythm come out of Jamaica and them fellas had 20 something song on the rhythm. It might be three, the artist, the, the, the DJ down here, go and buy three songs on the rhythm. <laughs> so them listen, listen, listen. You go and buy Gus and them and you listen all day and you pick three records, $20 for 45 And you pick up them three records now. And that is way in heavy rotation on the radio station. So the introduction to dub back in them days wasn't by our choice. It's by what them fellas and them choose to play. And one of the key fellas who used to choose to play songs is a fella by the name of Edison Carr. I wonder if, how, 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 how good your memory is, right? How, how good your memory is. Because everybody who on radio now, they went by um by Percy and them. <laughs> they either went to uh, Trinidad Broadcasting. I think it's TBC is the name of the, is, is the, name of the thing. Uh, am I right about that? <laughs> uh, or, or, or they go by Nigel Nicholson. Salute to Nigel in, um, in Star Broadcasting, right? <laughs> but back in the day, Everybody who was on radio had to go and train by a fellow by the name of Edison Carr. So, unlike my father and them, so, my father don't like, um, he don't like this idea that Trinidadian radio announcers talk with an accent, like, like, um, Rennie B and them, oh, Rennie B, going to play some Swamp Dog. He don't like that at all. He finds Trini should talk like Trini, right? <laughs> But they have a general radio accent that kind of slight American. I them go tell you it's not an American accent, eh, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, <laughs> it's a radio accent. They used to say have an urban accent. So Edison Carr is one of the people responsible for that. That is where Edison Carr was. Edison Carr had a school that trained a lot of radio announcers and so on on how to speak and so on. Uh, a matter of fact, uh, Darian and them, that's where them might have gone, you know what I mean? With Darian Marcel, when he must learn by Edison Cow to ask them kind of hard questions to people and embarrass people on the radio station and things like that, you know what I mean? But a lot of the announcers who was on radio went to Edison Car. And it was only on a Saturday morning with Edison Car when they're playing music on the radio because them days, no reggae and dance, all and things you used to play on the radio. A matter of fact, it wasn't really Calypso and Soka neither when I was, when I was small growing up in the, in the 80s and think it was more. Uh, like pop music and them kind of thing. You used to hear plenty. Um, we name again. What the white man named Jim Reeves? It's, it's plenty of them Jim Reeves thing on a morning. Plenty Diana Ross and Whitney Houston. I used to hate listening to NBC on a morning. You know, as much as I'd um, I'd talk about Dave Elcock in the morning and how much that used to be my ride to school every morning. Think about this, right? The same way I would feel about Dave Elcock and them on a the morning is how Zachary might feel about Miles and Blaze in the years to come. Well, is a cycle, you know? But I remember Dave Elcock coming on every morning, but them fellas on the most playing is heavy Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie and all sort of music. Where, uh, that Them music is annoy me. I can't take them music up to today. We never used to play a whole set of Caribbean music, but what you can know is that on a Saturday morning when it's time to clean out the place and floor had to polish and cushion had to take off. You remember they used to take off the cover cushion and change all them things? Remember they used to make you wash out all them ceramic, them little fine ceramic and them every... You had to wash out all them things and put them back on the thing. So I used to break them. And, you know, clean out your room, clean out under the bed, move plants. So that was Saturday morning was about, you know, in my time as a little child, Saturday morning wasn't about cartoon, no? Saturday morning was to clean. And one of the things you show about is Edison Cargo on the radio playing heavy soca music in rotation there to get the energy to clean the place on a Saturday morning. But in the midst of the soca, Edison Car always used to drop in something like this too. Now this one dedicated to all the youths who can't afford a Kamasaki Nara under 50. So listen to me. This one called The Walking Machine. Hey, hey. Hey, 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 hey. Follow me. Follow me. Hey, hey. Hey, 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 hey. Listen to me. Never call me. 
me, walk in my shell and call me, walk in my shell and ding walk in my shell and call me, walk in my shell and ding walk in my shell and call me, walk in my shell and ding walk in my shell and call me, walk in my shell and call me, walk like a police car with a siren, belly never run out of no gasoline, knock for me, do missing mama let me in, she said what you're doing, you're looking so unclean, me I make up what them call floraline, and they two are we rich up on the housing scheme, me walk in my shell and call me, Walk in my shit, ding ding ding. Walk in my shit, never call me. Walk in my shit. If I rode it ever in the Caribbean, me walk from Kingston, I me Ghana, Washington. Me walk from Washington, I me Ghana, Hong Kong. Fi go check me Chinese bridging where them call me Sapang. Me Sapang, he ma tell me he ma sell some Japan. Follow me now. Walk in my shit, never call me. Walk in my shit, ding ding ding. Walk in my shit, never call me. Walk in my shit. I me live in a Jamaica in the Caribbean. Never have no trouble to see a shanaida van. Yes, I'm that the lizard. I feel giant walk at me. Mommy sit down from the rhythm, sit down from the version. That the lizard in my chat, in my day, band champion. Follow me now. Walk in machine, never call me. Walk in machine, ding ding ding. Walk in machine, never call me. Walk in machine. And listen, it never used to play too long enough because that a man living by with the name Uncle Neville, as he hear that he turned the station. <laughs> <laughs> when you see, when you see, the old uncle and them start to hear that, his headache immediately, you know. <laughs> and isn't guy used to give me thing like this too. Now this one coming from Lothian and Spitty and dedicated to all the girls who wear size 10. And by size 8, you don't want them to look small. Don't know the back and cut on the door front, you know what I mean? Hey! Don't go to your size. Don't go to your size. You don't take stitchy advice, girls in the wood I get Blind feet, I'm on a one feet, I'm on a two Hey! Girls wear your size Young girls wear your size Cause if you don't take stitchy advice, girls in the wood I get Blind feet, I'm on a one feet, I'm on a two Now me sell last week, started them in book up on a curl Me tell them you go take her around the world now Kiss me naked, try your pin and head back She want new shoes and she want new frock she want you stocking and she want you strap She want you watch on bangle and hat Kiss me good side, she want you one back Me say, yeah, what make you want everything that is new Only thing I can afford is a pair of shoe Me give her money, but the girl still a screw Why you don't I die just like a patoo And I screw up my face like a crush can I look Me say, try it, that that's a way you want try if you do You want me to you in your twice, make it black and blue She said, no, no, sticky don't come at me at all You just meet me and you want to make me ball The girl foot big and the girl foot tall She wear size 10 and she want to look small Go buy size 8 and when it's good that she a ball But girl wear your size Young girl wear your size Headache you know you see Uncle Neville and them all know they're cussing <laughs> Hey couple things before I get out of here um, you see Central Bank and the Forex thing next week for that? No, I can't take that right now. Next week for that. Remind me. Remind me. Because Republic Bank come and say they cut people's credit card limit by half, right? So all who had credit card limit about 10,000 US. It now gone down to 5,000 US on your card, right? Now, again, <laughs> I see um, <laughs> salute, <laughs> salute to my guy, the wedding driver, right? The wedding driver. One of the greatest. You know what I mean? Man, 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 carry me up and down my wedding and make me feel nice. You know what I mean? I see he make a post there last week, I had to laugh. Because he say, all these people who complaining about this, their credit card limit is about 3,000 TT. <laughs> but, <laughs> let me say this. You see that issue with cutting that US thing by half is a major issue. This is something we have to keep watching, you know, because when your, your max was already 10,000 US, and granted, it does not affect most people. But the issue is that the people who it affects the most will cause it to affect most of us. Let me explain, right? Running a small business, ten thousand US dollars is not a lot of money a month, right? If you have um, you have subscriptions to pay that might be abroad, you have clothes to buy and sell and so on. Ten thousand US is not a lot of money for a business. So businesses was were already constrained. Uh, all business is constrained by um by that ten thousand US dollar limit. I have to do circus tricks every month to pay our bills that fall in US. And um, one of the circus tricks that we do is we get some people, some of the providers abroad, 
I don't know if they work with their banks or so. And we see it on Amazon as well, where I can select TT dollars. When I traveled recently, I saw it as well, where I could pay in TT. So you went by Marshalls, you put in your credit card, gave you the option to pay in TT or in US. That was one of the circus tricks we used to do. Republic Bank now say, all that is US. So if I select TT for a transaction, or I use a supplier who could take TT dollars, once it's an overseas transaction, then men say that affecting your $10,000. This is an issue for us. Republic is not even allowing me to pay the money in the U.S. onto the card and do the transaction. So I agree. I agree with my guy in that it is not going to affect the majority of people. And most of the people complaining about this may not have a 10,000 U.S. limit. But what I will say is that there will be a knock-on effect. Because if my business had to stay open, it had to stay profitable. Or I should say, if it has to stay open, it has to be profitable. And if I face an increase in cost, guess what happened to you? <laughs> we live in a country that is net importers, right? Uh, uh, particularly when you take away oil and gas from our balance of payments. Balance of payments is just imports versus exports, right? So how much you import versus how much you export. A negative balance of payments is normal. A persistent large negative balance of payments is an issue because then how you're financing all these things that you're importing that you're not making money to do, right? Some of it is be taxpayers' dollars, right? So... The issue with Republic Bank here being our biggest local bank, today for tomorrow deciding that the limit is cut in half affects my ability to pay my bills this month and here. So, so this, this month then is a problem. And I'll figure out how I'm going to supply us. Now, unfortunately, this if, if I could say that there's an upside, this issue has been going on long enough where our overseas suppliers understand that we have forex issues in the country. It's public knowledge. When it first started, it was worse because all it looking like is we bad pay and we looking for excuses not to pay them and so on. So I will say that we've been experiencing a lot of leniency from providers who, and we are all service. I don't have any products bringing in or anything like that. But at least people who we pay for different services, they work with us. They say, all right, well, where you could pay now, where you could pay. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's such a, it's such a difficult situation. So cutting this to five immediately tells me we need to find another bank. To, to work with where we have a limit that works for our level of expenses. Uh, again, if we see things that we could grow into or situations that we could uh, even be beyond where we spend now and we had to invest to make it happen, it's tricky to do that investment. So the growth of small businesses could be affected by this. And the way all of us are affected is that businesses will typically pass on the increasing costs to the consumer. So we will face that. The consumer also affected by this because now you have to be more judicious about what you're buying from abroad. Uh, like buying on Amazon and so on. And I did find it a little bit, um, the timing of it. Think of it, right? September month then, running into October, is when people will start getting the thing in place for what they have to buy for uh, Thanksgiving or what they would usually buy in Black Friday sale. And start doing the Christmas shopping and all these types of things, right? So there seems to be a general effort. There is a general effort to get us to spend less US dollars. Um, maybe, maybe I'll do an episode where I could dive into that a little more because it is not a, it's not a bad thing. The government trying to encourage us to shop locally is actually not a bad thing. It will feel you will feel a way about it in the short run, in the long run, we'll get over it and it could address or balance of payments deficit and, and even curb some inflationary pressure in the country and so on, bolster uh, local business and local business opportunities and so on. But we still net importers because even with local businesses, a lot of our inputs. So we might make we might make soft drink, we might make clothes and things, but a lot of our inputs. We don't we don't really we don't really do primary level manufacturing and the primary product we have, we don't own it and it's running out. That is the oil, right? We had to, we had to make this is why we should be glad them fellas on them gig are another game and all you in understanding. All in understanding the long play. The cricketers e understand the economics better than the economists, you know. What I mean, the men put themselves in place, you know. So they should be good where Guyana is concerned because the biggest team in Guyana. Is going to be the Amazon Warriors in the near future. So if you let them fellas then go secure the contract in their retirement. <laughs> <laughs> but I did see that Colman Burt said um Colman Burt said that the central bank injected 50 million US to ease forex issues. Um somebody who knows more about finance, go ahead and tell me 50 million US is a figure that could 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 really impact it. 
because the beginning of the article said with TNC's credit card sales using foreign exchange projected to reach $2 billion this year. Uh, Minister of Finance requested the central bank to inject $50 million. So if you're looking at online sales, right, they, they, they're saying that basically this is what, oh, sorry, credit card sales going to U.S. $2 billion. I had to assume that that means $2 billion going out of the country, right? It can't be credit card sales on things locally, the accounts in there. But um, $50 million over $2 billion would be a very, very small percentage, a real small figure. But he basically said that the uh, Republic made that decision without consultation. And I think to myself, Imbert, you studying the consult you. They never even consult me. They could have they could have tell me this a couple months in advance. Let me get my ducks in a row. But September month is is a tricky month for me now because I had, I had to figure some things out as to how we getting bills paid as a company with a a Republic Bank credit card. It's, it's tough. But again, I mean, we want to heavy Ollie up with that at this point in time. No, I, just, I just wanted to highlight that. And we'll talk more about it because I'll tell Ollie how I get through. <laughs> because if it's one thing I show about you, you'll get through. And, and and imagine bigger businesses. Imagine what's going to happen with, um, with as, as, as they continue to have a Forex crunch. Imagine the very big businesses. They're not affected by this 10,000 US limit thing, right? But um, in terms of the amount of U.S., they need to bring in their containers, to bring in their goods, to buy from foreign providers, to pay consultants, and so on. It, 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 things, things, things are about to change, and it's about to get sticky. But when all else fails, <laughs> depend on Angus Eve. If everything else ain't working for you, Angus Eve is going to work for you because Trinidad and Tobago is finally, <laughs> I never thought I'd be saying this, but finally back in the top footballing nations in the world. Don't mind is a hundred, right? Don't mind is a hundred. Don't mind is a hundred. <laughs> Top one hundred. But as the headlines say, FIFA ranking jump shows a step in a positive in a positive direction as according to Eve. This is from the news they written by Ronnie Walcott. Trinidad and Tobago's men's national football coach Angus Eve and the so Soka Warriors are heading in the right direction after climbing from 102nd to 98th in the last FIFA rankings, which were released on Thursday. Listen, and them say Eve didn't care about FIFA rankings just a couple weeks ago, right? When they asked him about rankings, he said, rank don't matter. We beat big side. <laughs> you understand? And now he's saying you rank matter. I, I, I get damn right. <laughs> it matter when it matter. TNT won the first two games of their 2023-24 CONCACAF Nation League, a campaign versus Curacao and El Salvador earlier this month. And Eve said it's just a reward for his team's effort over the last two months. It's a step in the right direction. We started this project in 2021 and we're seeing the fruits of our labor now said Eve, whose contract as head coach was extended to March 2024 by the FIFA-appointed TTFA Normalization Committee. It's been tiny steps, but it's been a difficult road. The process is ongoing and is a rebuilding process. Prior to these latest rankings, TNT were last ranked among the FIFA's top 100 teams in December 2021. Really? As recent as that. The TT coach is looking, is looking towards a brighter future for his team as he includes younger, a younger group of players in the mix. The work is still in progress and it's good to see the country back on the top 100. Eve told the news that the guys have done tremendously well. We've revamped the team from 2023 Gold Cup. We've made several changes. We have ma- we made changes in terms of the methodology of where we are at. We were focused on what we wanted to do, which introduced the younger players into the team. TNT are con- cur- currently ranked fourth in the Caribbean Football Union with, with Jamaica, Haiti and Curacao leading the charge. I can't believe we're in a position with Curacao. Maybe Haiti, yeah, because, I mean, we'd had some problems with Haiti back in Gali and them days. But Curacao, better than me, Curacao. Where's Curacao population? Curacao has 76 people on the island. 11 of them playing football better than me. With two CNL group matches still to come against Guatemala and Curacao on October 17, TNT on the cusp of qualifying for the quarterfinal stage of the competition. Quoted as saying, I'll be talking to the players and they're in good spirits. This augurs well going into the other stages of the tournament is a good platform for us to build from for the Nations League because I don't think anything anybody expected us to be here. I think that's true. One thing I like about Angus Eve, Angus Eve will pick up an adversary, an adversary stance. You know. He seemed to be able to talk the team into believing that everybody hate them and everybody against them and I had to go out there and fight. If that is what you had to do, brother, to make this team play, and to make we come back and win a, a game three two means we do that in a long time. Now I take in that yes, is we against the world make here. You understand? A matter of fact, if the girls and them who was managed who was going against my lady had this kind of attitude that them venny and them against we, a local might have win the competition. You know what I mean? I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like that support. So the 13th of October we are playing against Guatemala. Guatemala could be a little bit of a uh, 
I want to say a sterner test, but also a sort of a metric as to where we really are in the region. Because the CFU is not a measuring stick for us. Uh, I, I would go as far as to say Jamaica and Haiti should probably even shouldn't even measure themselves against the CFU. Because the CFU ain't going to get you through to no World Cup or no major competition. You have to beat CONCACAF. And until we get our ranking up, it don't matter where we is in the 100 in the world, until we get our ranking up in CONCACAF, we have a problem. We can't be losing to side like Guatemala and Panama and think them a side you have to beat. CONCACAF are three big side. America, Mexico, and Costa Rica. We supposed to be competing with Costa Rica for that third spot as far as I'm concerned. We supposed to be up there. The fact that we have a bunch of youths looks good for my travel plans for 2026. That bunch of youths going to be seasoned players, win, lose, or draw by the time we start qualifying for 2026, which could, uh, what do we mean, 2023? That's probably next year. By, by, by early next year, when we start international breaks, we should be starting our qualifying campaign. And uh, maybe if his contract is up to March, that is what, um, just after March is when qualifying games will start for the World Cup for us for 2026. And, um, I hope he's still in the seat because the, the early stages of qualifying is upset me when you see Trinidad losing in them early stages of qualifying. Because that when we playing Beckway and St. Martin and all them places where just them places nice to visit, but in football them is licks like dirt. It looks like dirt. Them fellas is playing football for the country and working an all-inclusive resort. We need to beat them convincingly going into them final stages where so so by that time. This team must be accustomed to playing against Guatemala and going in Guatemala and beating them. And going to Costa Rica and beating them. Competing in Mexico where they carry where we care breed. Going in the States, they go carry Colorado. We, we, this group of youths here must be accustomed to that. And hopefully, by the time... Because I, I said it in the last couple of episodes before this, um, this tournament. You know, winning is solve real problems. And when you see a team winning... The locker room that they say he lost, which is now senior professional footballers who are going to bring a level of uh, stability to this team. Salute Aubrey David, because Aubrey David, doing a, uh, he doing a work in defense and he doing a work as captain of the team. But bringing, in, bringing back again people like Batu and stuff and, and hopefully Molly you know the, the Joneses and so on could only do well with this team if the team doing well and them fellas decide to play their role and not... Um, you got to let the coach be in charge. Uh, uh, regard, win, lose, or draw, the coach must stay in charge until he's fired. You understand? Until he's until he fired and you have to go your way. It can't have a locker room where players calling the shots and saying what they want and what they want to do and so on. That, that does not, um, that typically does not work. It, it doesn't work and it will not work. So, that looking like it for me. You know, I don't know how we reach. I tell myself for sure we um. We good for our one hour episode today, but somehow we reach here, right? We done here already. So I want to leave all over the next Edison car special, right? And I dedicating this to the Guyana Amazon Warriors. I dedicating it to the Venezuelan nationals headed by Milady Matarano or Queen. And the organizers of Stolen Production Limited. I dedicating it to who again? Who again? We, 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 we foreigners better than we. Foreigners better than we in every area except football at this point in time. So I want to leave you one more, one more, um, one more Edison car special. Now this one dedicated to all foreigners. All y'all, they will begin at this. Dedicated to our scout who want to fly out. A candle at a rose. Okay. Anything me say, only say, I feel fly out. Anything me say, wanna say, I feel fly out. Anything me say, wanna say, I feel fly out. Anything me say, wanna say, I feel fly out. On a British Airway, we a feel fly out. On a Jamaica, we a feel fly out. On a Eastern Airline, we a feel fly out. On the New Concord, we a feel fly out. Now on a Cayman Airline, we a feel fly out. Come up. Jam in a Kingston, out of Southern Me and me virgin with a sip to stout Remember that the lizard far in Africa about Yes, I that the lizard man, the DJ is go Big name! I feel fly out We a feel fly out Come now! I feel fly out We a feel fly out Jam in a me house around 11.30 Me and me girl now with them called Rosemary Telegram coming, man, it coming for me No! Signed by me sister and me auntie Now them want that the lizard in a foreign city Pack up for me close man immediately Jump in a car, me said that a taxi 
Who wish part me reach out and a man man play Now they play it, they fuck cross the Caribbean sea Now everybody man them start to sing for me Them say, foreign can't miss me, it can't miss me Foreign can't miss me, it can't miss me Foreign can't miss me, it can't miss me In England, in Japan, Cayman, Caribbean Got the lizard that the rum dance man Sit down on the rhythm like a any scorpion Sting up on your foot, yeah. sting up on your hand and Go check out 600 miles per second Circle that the lizard that the rum dance I feel fly out, I feel fly out I feel fly out, I feel fly out Up on a British here we are We are fly out Up on a age of maker We are fly out That the lizard you a star We are fly out The flower gun and you a star We are fly out Sanchez, you a star. We are fire. Red Dragon, him a star. We are fire. Oh, Mr. Soji, him a star. We are fire. Oh, Daddy Riley, him a star. We are fire. No. Enjoy your week. Next week, so to speak, Tuesday a week. Listen, enjoy the week. Take all the time on the road. The road getting back wet again. Hopefully, Wasa give you water. Well, let's take care of yourself and have a productive week and a safe week. I'll talk to you all next week. Bye.